Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Throughout our culture, certain figures stand as iconic symbols of scientific genius. Long after their lives have ended, the respective works of these icons continue to shape the direction of the sciences. In the fields of physics and astronomy, the figures who stand tallest share one thing in common. All envisioned a universe in which the force of gravity predominates. But less celebrated in the annals of official history is the work of scientific pioneers who shared a different vision of the universe, one in which the predominant force is not gravitational, but electrical. Today, Thunderbolt's colleague Bishop Nicholas Sykes explores the foundations that early experimentalists laid for the electric universe theory of today. Two statements can now be made on the topic of areas of the existing mainstream paradigm of science that are coming under increasingly critical analysis. These are, one, that there are groups of scientists who have developed serious and substantial positions against the overall correctness of Albert Einstein's work on special relativity and general relativity, and two, that the data from NASA and other space agencies are far easier to explain in the context of a universe being powered by electric forces rather than gravitational force, and that the phenomena of space being investigated are often demonstrable in a scaled-down way in the electric discharge laboratory. Albert Einstein was a dominant figure of the 20th century, and his relativity theory is generally thought to be beyond question. Oddly enough, however, the pillar of relativity upon which mainstream modern physics is erected is resistant to being incorporated into one cohesive theory with another pillar of mainstream modern physics, quantum mechanics, which for a long time Einstein refused to accept in its entirety. Therefore, though many may be unwilling to admit it, it is clear that there is something seriously awry with the mainstream modern understanding of physics on this ground alone that it is founded upon two theories that cannot cohere. Both quantum mechanics and relativity theory were 20th century developments, and if anybody has come to the point of questioning whether physics has developed along reasonable lines under the influence of these theories, he has to take a look at what researchers were doing and finding before these theories became accepted. So this is what I will attempt to do here first. Sir Isaac Newton, who lived between 1642 and 1727, was one of the greatest giants of science, who, perhaps surprisingly for a man who some believe was rather opinionated, did admit that he reached his great height by standing on the shoulders of those who went before him. He called his greatest published work Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. About this work, it has been said that a science had emerged that, at least in certain respects, so far exceeded anything that had ever gone before, that it stood alone as the ultimate exemplar of science generally. For the purpose of this article, I intend to make certain brief points about Newton's work. First, it was mathematical in focus. Phenomena were understood to be explained by their adherence to mathematical relationships. Secondly, physical experiments were carried out such as the famous pendulum experiments and the planetary and lunar observations to induce or confirm mathematical relationships. Thirdly, the dynamic cause of observed motions was not openly speculated upon. Newton wrote that it was enough that the phenomena implied gravitational attraction as they did, but the phenomena did not so far indicate the cause of this gravity. We know that Newton privately speculated on the cause of gravity, its relationship to what we call electric force, and to the structure of matter itself, but apparently he was not at all keen to open his mind about these matters to inspection. Responding to the criticism he met on his presentation of gravitational force as an invisible force able to act over vast distances, he declared I frame no hypotheses. Michael Faraday, who lived from 1791 to 1867, some 150 years after Newton, 
was the scientist who, amongst many other achievements, brought electricity into mainstream science, famously experimenting with electric motors and generators and publishing papers on their principles of operation. The astronomer Sir John Herschel wrote to Michael Faraday in 1850 of the recent discovery of a link between sunspots and magnetic storms on Earth because of Faraday's investigations into the links between electricity and magnetism. In this letter, Herschel wondered if the sun could not owe its brightness to cosmical electric currents traversing space. If all this be not premature, we stand on the verge of a vast cosmical discovery such as nothing hitherto imagined can compare with. Consider what I have said about the exciting cause of the solar light, referring it to cosmical electric currents traversing space and finding in the upper regions of the sun's atmosphere matter in a fit state of tenuity to be auroralized by them. It is a shame that Herschel's insight remains 160 years later just on the verge. This is because of the path taken by the mainstream physics of the 20th century, about which I hope to explain in due course. Michael Faraday invented a device he called a homopolar motor. Donald Scott, the astronomer and electric universe researcher, informs us that going against the grain of mainstream physics, the Nobel laureate Hannes Alfven in 1986 posited both an electrical galactic model and an electrical solar model. Recently, physicist Wal Thornhill has pointed out that Alfvane's circuits are really scaled-up versions of the familiar homopolar motor that serves as the watt-hour meter in each of our homes. The simple application of the Lorentz force equation crossing the direction V of the current into the direction B of the magnetic field yields a rotational force. Not only does this affect explain the mysterious tangential velocities of the outer stars in galaxies, but also in scaled-down version the observed fact that our Sun rotates faster at its equator than at higher solar latitudes. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.